listen, did you know that 50% of you, if you're going through the menopause, will lose one third of your hair density just because of a drop in estrogen? So today I'm talking about the menopause, hair loss, hair thinning. Can you regrow your hair naturally? What natural solutions are available? If you are somebody right now, a woman over 30s, 40s, 50s, who may be going for the menopause, is worried about the menopause, has witnessed friends who've lost their hair because of the menopause. Okay, so today I'm talking about the menopause and how it affects your hair growth, how it affects the thickness of your hair, your hair density, and what you can do to avoid being in that. 50% of women who experience hair thinning, 30%, one third of their hair is lost just because of a drop of estrogen in relation to the menopause. Prior to going to the menopause, your body was releasing an egg every single month, or the ovaries in the body were. And as the ovaries are also producing that egg for ovulation purposes, your body's also producing a hormone called estrogen. As well as estrogen, the body also produces a hormone called progesterone. So when the body is going through the process of whereby there's no longer an egg release every single month, the hormone that helps with that egg release and helps with other functions in the body as well, cardiovascular health, hair growth cycle, you know, glowing skin, no night sweats, no, no excessive sweating. When that egg is not being released, that hormone drops down significantly. And when that hormone drops down, in comes through the front door a myriad of side effects. So if you're a woman out there who's watching and maybe you experience some hair shedding, hair thinning, and wondering what's going on, this video is going to give you some really simple tips so you can action at home and hopefully help you to regrow your hair naturally. And one of the key things I will say to you guys is don't ignore it, let's try and deal with it because your hair is a plant. And I believe in the magic of plants and how they grow. Our hair and scalp is so much like plants, it's crazy scientifically as well, it's crazy. So I'm going to give you some really clear and practical advice that will hopefully help you to regrow your hair using, using a natural solution. So stay tuned. Any woman who's been through a hair thinning experience, I have recently myself, I'm actually still battling that. It is quite a debilitating and huge knock on your confidence because your hair is your beauty. You're always told your hair is your crown. So when you experience significant hair thinning, if you're always used to having very thick, voluminous hair, it can be quite a confidence shutdown. There are three key things that affect hair thinning with the menopause. The first thing is mentioned already is dropping the hormone estrogen. And second thing is DHT. Too much DHT is being produced in the body. Now DHT is a naturally occurring hormone in the body, a bit like estrogen. But if you have too much of it, it's called dehydrotestosterone. If you have too much of that DHT in the body, what happens is it starts to attack the hair follicles and that can lead to hair thinning and hair loss as well. So you've got estrogen, too much DHT. And a third thing, that really impacts hair thinning when you're going through the menopause is stress and cortisol. Those two things go hand in hand because stress or cortisol is a stress hormone, which again is naturally released by the body. So how can you avoid experiencing hair thinning if you're dealing with any of those three things? I'm gonna discuss and give you guys some natural solutions to help you possibly regrow your hair and just feel much better as, you, as you're going through the menopause in your body anyway, because the menopause really unbalances your hormones. So how can we manage hair thinning? I believe your hair is a plant. How can you, how can you, what natural solutions are available to you? Diet is everything to hair growth. People don't realize that, but if you have an unhealthy diet, it will impact how your hair grows. And even more so, it can actually impact how much hair you actually produce in the follicles. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the follicles can produce more than one strand of hair in each follicle home. So the follicle is kind of like the mini hair making factory. And basically when you have a drop in estrogen, what happens is, or an influx of DHT in the body, the naturally occurring hormone, what happens is the follicle, I call it a follicle, I call it a factory, hair making factory, the follicle, it won't produce as much hair as it normally would. So for example, if you had say 100,000 follicles on your head and they're all producing three strands of hair in each individual follicle, that's 300,000 strands of hair you have. But if by, by nature's way, you then begin the menopause, and at the end of it, you've now only got 200,000 strands of hair, that's quite a lot of hair loss, if you think about it. So how can you stop the hair follicles, or if they stopped already, how can you make your hair making factory then produce the same amount of hair it was producing prior to you starting the menopause? One of the first things is diet. So you wanna make sure you are getting a lot, a, a, a very healthy, balanced diet. What does that look like? Your hair is mainly made of protein, right? It's keratin protein, same as your nails. So if you're not getting enough protein sources, that's the first thing that's gonna affect is your hair and how much hair is being produced. So I'm vegetarian, I have a plant-based diet. So for me, I have to look for plant protein sources, things like pumpkin seeds, chickpeas, lentils, a chock full of proteins. 
and especially pumpkin seed. Do you even know that pumpkin seed contain more protein than actual eggs? Which is crazy. So if you are a plant-based person out there, grab some pumpkin seeds, put it into your smoothie, have it as a snack in your bag as you, as you go through your day. That's the number one thing. The other thing is green leafy vegetables. So iron, green leafy vegetables that are found in things like spinach, spinach, kale, that kind of thing. If you are lacking in dark green leafy vegetables in your diet, linked to iron, which, which, which have a lot of iron in them, that's also going to affect how much hair you are growing. So if you're trying to regrow your hair with the menopause, you need to make sure you have a green leafy diet. Maybe make a salad. Uh, you even get some spirulina, which is also high in iron too, and incorporate it into your diet. One thing about spinach, it's best not to eat spinach completely raw because when you slightly heat or wilt the spinach, that's when those nutrient enzymes are actually released. Spinach is quite a strange one. So you have to slightly heat it or wilt it, not too much, to release those nutrients. So spinach is great. Protein spinach, things like your biotin and zinc. Please guys do some research into vegetable sources that will actually help you to have a balanced diet. The other thing that's gonna help you to regrow your hair naturally if you are dealing with thinning hair or hair loss because of the menopause is supplements. Now, I don't like to push supplements all the time because I think if you have a balanced diet, you should be able to get a large majority of your nutrients from that, but really and truly, people are so busy and haven't always got the time. So it's in particular, in reference to hair in particular, I will say there are, there are certain nutrients or certain supplements you should be taking on a daily basis, even more so if you live in the UK where I live where it's right now, it's spring, literally spring, and it's been, it feels like it's, it's winter. It's so cold outside. And obviously the sky is quite gray. Sunshine equals vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 affects over 2000 cells in your body. So if you have a lack of vitamin D3 in your body, in your system, that's gonna impact even more as you go through the menopause and, and come out of the menopause, your hair growth density and, and just impact hair loss in general. So it's really important to make sure you were taking vitamin D3. And I was just taking something in terms of 5,000 IU, but also take it with with a K2 vitamin as well. So vitamin D3 and K2, and then also magnesium. That triad of vitamins are key for hair production. The other thing to take as well is zinc and biotin. Um, have a look at those. Ask your GP as well, ask your doctor too. Let him know what you're doing too, if you're concerned, but just do your own research too. But if you're taking vitamin D3 at least, magnesium and K2, that's gonna help with hair production. Vitamin D3 is critical. Uh, people don't realize that a lack of vitamin D will significantly impact even the thickness of your hair as well. So it's really important to make sure you're taking vitamin D3. I take a vegan one. I take full, I take 5,000 IU and a vitamin K2 every single day plus magnesium, or when I can remember, <laughs> but I take that daily. And that is helping me to regrow my hair. As I said before, I'm going through, I went through some hair loss, more so related to cortisol, high cortisol levels in my body, which I'm also dealing with. Talking about cortisol, that's the other thing I mentioned as well. High cortisol levels or stress levels negatively impact the way your hair is growing or negatively impact even more so your hair production or the way your hair is shedding as you go through the menopause. Stress is a killer for the follicles. And in fact, when the body is producing a lot of cortisol, it actually attacks the hair follicle. So we've spoken about three main elements that really attack your hair during the menopause, even leading up to the menopause. The next thing I will discuss with you is how do you deal with the actual problems? What solutions do you have for your actual hair? So I am a cosmetic scientist. I'm the creator of a brand and product called Root to Tear. And many, many years ago, I dealt with alopecia and hair loss, and I created a product called the Root Energizer. I believe that it's really important if you can do to minimize the amount of chemicals and synthetic ingredients and toxins entering into your body. So if you go to your GP or a trichologist or dermatologist, for hair thinning, the first thing they're gonna offer you is something called minoxidil. Now, minoxidil was created in the 1970s. When it was first created, it wasn't actually for alopecia or hair growth at all. Its actual main role was to reduce blood pressure. Minoxidil is a vasodilator, so it, it kind of uh, has an effect on the dilation of the blood vessels and affects your blood flow throughout your body. So <clears throat> something that is made for, for blood pressure, how does that affect hair growth? Well, your hair, is a plant and basically needs oxygen and, and nutrients found in the blood to thrive and grow. So the, these guys discovered that this vasodilator, which is something that basically affects the way your, your blood vessels open and close and, and the energy behind them, was also producing extra hair growth. The only thing they failed to mention to you was, if you place minoxidil basically anywhere, 
hair grows there too. So for me personally, I would rather use a plant-based solution to regrow my hair and I've, I've always advised my customers and clients to do the same thing as well. So if there's a plant-based solution, the Root Energizer is what I call the natural version of minoxidil because it works in the same way. There's a really, a really popular ingredient called rosemary oil, which is also a natural plant-based vasodilator. So it also affects the opening and closing rate or dilation of your blood vessels. It pushes blood vessels up to the roots in your hair and that's how it helps your hair to grow. So if you're suffering with a menopause, menopausal symptom, thinning hair or alopecia, or you're noticing your hair just not growing properly. Have you thought about how your blood is flowing? Do you ever massage your scalp? Do you use a vasodilator? Do you use any natural plant-based solutions for re-energizing the blood flow to your roots in your scalp to help your hair to function and grow? It's really important, guys, that you get a regular boost of energy on the scalp where it's needed to feed the roots. The scalp is your soil. Okay, think about a plant. The scalp is your soil. So the nutrients have to be delivered to that soil because the roots of the hair, which are like a plant stem and leaf, are sitting in the soil. If they're so scientifically similar, it's quite scary. Well, it's not scary at all. It's, it's the way the creator intended them to be. So why not use plant-based solutions that have no side effects to help you grow your hair in a better way? But minoxidil is everywhere. I see it all over TikTok. I get it from a GP, why can't I just use that? Well, you can do, but be aware of those side effects attached to minoxidil, things like an increase in testosterone, um, heart issues, heart attack issues. So many things are attached to side effects of using minoxidil, not to mention, if you apply minoxidil on your forehead, you will grow hair down there as well. If minoxidil drips onto your side, of your head here, it will grow hair there too. And one of the major downfalls of minoxidil is if you stop using it, a lot of the time, the hair that's grown extra portions then falls out again. So you have to keep on using it to really see that result. And I think really and truly long-term thinking, using minoxidil on a long-term basis is not healthy for anyone. So I would say try the Root Energizer, available on my website. We also have a product called the Grow It Long Scalp Serum. We sell them in a kit called the Harvest Hair Growth Kit because you're a farmer of your hair. And even if you're going through the menopause and it's it's giving you all these unnecessary symptoms, unwanted symptoms that are indeed necessary. You want something natural to boost the energy to your follicles, something natural to give you an opportunity to grow healthy, lush hair. I'm currently growing through, um, <laughs> again, hair loss due to stress. I'm actually regrowing my hair again. And I went through it about 18 months ago, regrew my hair, and my focus, my hair loss is focused on the crown and a little bit on the sides as well, but it's now starting to grow back here on the side. But I'm using the Re-Energizer alongside some other methods, which I'm going to talk about in another video, to really harvest my hair growth again. So if you are suffering or worried about thinning hair, again, you need to make sure you're using a regular scalp oil. If you are suffering with the menopause or hair symptom, alopecia, thinning hair, hair shedding, try out the Root Energizer. Use it three to four times a week and try to massage your scalp a good five to 10 minutes every day if you can do. Because when you massage your scalp as well, it then also increases that blood flow to the roots and that's really key really important in trying to get your hair to grow back it doesn't happen overnight so if you're looking for a video a clickbait video this is not the one for you nothing happens overnight but think of your hair growth in seasons when a farmer plants his crops and he sprinkles the first set of seeds um, at the beginning of the season he's not going to check to see if those are harvesting in week two week three week four he's going to wait a full season which a season to me is a good three months there are four seasons in the year and i think you should look at your hair growth in seasons as well so harvest your hair growth um, i've been saying that for over a decade harvest your hair growth you are a farmer of amazing hair and just because your body has a fluctuation of imbalanced hormones because of a natural thing we all go through well, women go through, not all, not men, women go through, called the menopause or the perimenopause, when you're on the cusp of menopause, you can actually do something about it if you treat your hair like a plant. Natural solutions, avoid also, um, avoid also not washing your scalp. So if you are gonna use a root energizer, please make sure you're washing your scalp at least once a week. We have a great shampoo on our website as well called the Stimulate and Cleanse Shampoo. It's very clarifying, but at the same time, won't strip your hair completely of its natural oils. It's really important for the scalp to be clean and clear to push out new hair strands. Um, if your scalp is dirty or full of grease, sebum and bacteria, it's very difficult to push out new hair strands, just like a plant. If you place lots of grease and grit around the soil of your plant as you're 
trying to grow it, it will not grow that plant. So I'll run through it again. Root Energizer is the natural form of minoxidil. We don't really want to use minoxidil. It's quite toxic long term. You will see hair growth, but it, the side effects it comes with, it far outweigh the pros of using it. So you can use my natural version of minoxidil. It's been around for over 10 years, proven and tested, scientifically backed as well to regrow your hair. But again, it won't happen overnight. So give it a season. A season is 90 days and keep on doing it. Me personally, me, it took me a good 12, maybe 18 months to grow back my hair in the middle. And I went through a little stress, a stress belt again. And it, I know that area of my head in the crown, like so many other black women, is a, is a hot spot for thinning if you are dealing with stress or high levels of cortisol. I spoke about that before. So it's really important to maintain a regular routine for hair growth and be consistent and dedicated to it. If you follow those tips and found those tips to be helpful, guys, um, I've got some more videos coming up on the menopause and also just healthy hair growth and just by treating your hair as a plant, how it will evolve, um, how you can nurture it, nourish it and how it will thrive. So if you like what, I've, if you like what you've heard today, um, <laughs> please do like the video, subscribe as well. And please do share with family and friends who may be in need of this information. This information should be well known, but it's not. So I think please do your duty, share the knowledge in your community to your family and friends who could be suffering in silence and not know what to do. Thank you guys, have a blessed day and I'll see you next video.